And hearing the th theme for this year is Poetry Sunday, is anything goes, I decided to reflect on my journey from my poetry to prose and how it dovetails with my views as a Unitarian Universalist. I started out early in life as a secret poet. I say secret because I hid my poems in a journal in the dollhouse that my father made me when I was doing them with a strike. I hid the poems because I was hiding who I was when I lived in a sea of conformity. I also hid, it, hid that journal because I had learned to be afraid of being my true self. After the age of 50, I became a member of this Unitarian Universalist congregation, and I learned that the first Unitarian Universalist principle was to recognize the inherent worth and dignity of every person. By that time, the lines of my poems had gotten longer, often contained dialogue, and I had moved from writing poetry to writing literary fiction. But I am still informed by the image and by the capturing of the moment in poetry. Recently, I've been working on a memoir about my life on my father who died in 2017. The memoir is still now from antiquity, surviving a father's death. And reflecting on the life of my father, I remember our relationship with antiquity. In the process, I wonder if the local differences can be healed. And I wonder, perhaps most of all, who I am after my father's death and writing about my life with my father. I'm still inspired by the images of memory. I'm going to add with a section from that memoir. The other night after teaching a class nearby in the city, I encountered a pickup truck with a large American flag propped up at the back and waving at me. This is an unusual sight in my liberal neck of the woods. I looked at the flag and breathed in, then I breathed out. I really did feel different. It, I felt more relaxed. I remember in my meditation when I breathed in the fear and suffering caused by the flag, particularly in those years after 2016, and breathed out compassion. I don't know if this changes the world, but it changed me. I can feel that I was more relaxed. If nothing else, increased my capacity to do good in the world. For me, the American flag has lost the stigma of fear that some might want it to project. The American flag could then stand for something else. And if it could stand for something else, it would. As the Unitarian minister and abolitionist Theodore Parker first said in 1853, and his sentiment echoed by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his widely known I Have a Dream speech, which he gave in 1963, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. The autumn after my father's death, my partner Barbara and I took a long awaited trip to the beach. We like to go to a wildlife reserve that is somewhat close to us, about an hour and a half away. To get there, we took Route 30, which is a two lane highway, and went past the town of Obsekin, where my late aunt my mother's sister had lived. While she was alive, Barbara and I had visited her often. About 12 years before my father died, I used to take him down for to stay for long weekends at her home. On our ride to the shore, Barbara pointed out 
The churchyard where man was buried, we made plans to visit our grave on the ride home. At the beach town next to the wildlife reserve, we drove to the end of the cement walkway, crossed the relatively wide beach, and set up our folding chairs facing the ocean. We were sitting where the waves had rolled in earlier and wet the sand, making it a darker color. The waves crashed in front of us. What looked like a freighter with the distant horizon, the line between darker gray blue sea and lighter sky. On the beach where the white tipped waves crashed, a girl took a solitary walk through sea foam. I turned my head to the right, looking past Barbara to where the buildings of Atlantic City were so small they were virtually indistinguishable. All I saw was the ocean and the beach. The sun turned to silver as it glinted off the ocean in its autumnal reflection. The ocean, beach, and sun were so beautiful that the present moment was all that existed. Later, I thought, that is who I am, sitting there on the edge of the ocean, which felt like the edge of the world, where I could feel my beingness most acutely. I belong to the universe. Thank you for listening. Namaste.